The MESAC guidelines address uh, the treatment of patients with uh, hemophilia A with inhibitors who are on map, with the primary focus uh, being patients who are being treated with bypassing agents because the complications of TMA as well as thrombosis was seen significantly in these populations and therefore we wanted to make sure that we address uh, the need for close monitoring as well as offer advice on dosing and monitoring of these patients if such complications were to occur. TMA and thrombosis were associated with the use of uh, high doses exceeding 200 units per kg per day of APCCs and therefore the recommendations are that we restrict the dose of APCCs to less than 100 units per kg per day. Uh, we are also recommending that uh, we try to avoid prolonged use of APCCs with the map. try to restrict the use to less than 24 hours, and if the use is necessary for longer than a 24-hour period, consider close monitoring at an HTC by a hematologist who is well-versed with the complications associated with this. It's also important to recognize that laboratory testing is not useful, or the routine laboratory testing may not be helpful in this situation or in patients with map. So the MESAC guidelines also alluded to the fact that all PTT-based assays would not be useful in this situation, and monitoring of inhibitors also would need modification of the assay. We would need to use human uh, reagents to be able to detect the inhibitor, and modifications of the assay would be required. The CDC has given us um, uh, an indication, has provided us with reassurance that they would be able to run inhibitors, but they would need to know that the patient is an emicizumab in order to make sure that the assay is appropriately used. The MESAC guidelines also you also alluded to the fact that uh, all bleeds may not need to be treated in patients who are on emicizumab, uh, but in order to, in, but to also ensure that major bleeds require treatment immediately like they should be. Minor bleeds may be monitored and not treated in both patients with and without inhibitors in this situation. The major unmet need in patients with hemophilia is our ability to prevent the development of inhibitors. If we can prevent the development of inhibitors, that would be a major complication in these patients that would be completely taken out of the equation and would really change the management of patients with hemophilia A. The major unmet need uh, in our current management of uh, hemophilia with recombinant factor products is our inability to extend, it, extend the half-life for hemophilia A patients. Hemophilia B patients have been very effectively managed with weekly and sometimes bi-monthly treatment with factor products on the extended half-life. So that, in my mind, has effectively addressed the need to extend half-life. Unfortunately for the hemophilia A population, this has not been achievable with both pegylated albumin-fused or FC products, primarily because of the dependence of factor VIII on the one Willebrand factor, and therefore the half-life is extension is limited in these patients. Um, in addition to that, on, in the patients with inhibitors, our management of uh, bleeding, breakthrough bleeding in these patients is, with the currently available bypassing agents, is not acceptable. There are also unmet needs with the new products that we have currently in place. For example, with the emesuzumab, there are things that we don't necessarily know how to manage yet. In our very active patient population who want to play competitive sports, we are unsure if emesuzumab will be able to provide effective coverage for bleeding that could be associated with intense activity. We also do not know how we can use emesuzumab in the neonatal population. Is it going to be effective to prevent uh, intracranial hemorrhage? Um, is it going to be effective in uh, management of uh, trauma-related bleeding that is uh, seen in children when they're learning to walk or run? We also do not know how we can use emesuzumab with ITI. We hope that these will all be studies that are going to be conducted very soon in our patients and we will learn as we go. So with respect to what hasn't been addressed uh, from a patient perspective on quality of life, whatever we do so far, it's still a poke. It's still something they have to remember. It's still something they have to do on a regular basis. Uh, they cannot forget to take their medicine. They have to still take uh, some kind of factor for breakthrough bleeding. It has to be taken with them wherever they go. Um, I guess these are still unmet needs. If gene therapy were to come into play and we could potentially cure the patient of their hemophilia, that would be a different 
uh, question. We still don't know how this plays out for the pediatric population. In the adult population itself, we're still learning how gene therapy is going to work in the future. As a hematologist, I think this is the most exciting time for both providers as well as patients who have hemophilia. It has been a dramatic change in the last couple of years with products that have completely changed the lifestyle and uh, opportunities for our patients with hemophilia. Uh, we now have options that we never thought would ever be possible. Our patients with inhibitors have lives that have completely changed from the drugs that, are, uh, that they're able to use now. Um, and as a physician, I think uh, there's so much more that I can offer to my patients than I did just a couple years ago. So this makes it a really exciting time for everybody in the field.